Well, if y'all are willing to, um, I don't have a lot of speaking parts. So there's just like a bunch of sharing and then we can have an open discussion. Um, so I think we should just go ahead and get started. It's late in the day. Um, so yeah, um, I'm Courtney Muma. Um, Fred, I don't think we've actually met other than seeing each other in emails or other presentations. Um, um, good I'm the, good to meet you too. I'm the Texas Digital Library Deputy, or Deputy Director and I'm also, um, the, the Vireo representative from TDL. So I uh, work with Frank Smutniak, who's also here to run the service. Um, Frank is our lead developer, um, who has been gallantly working for the last two years on, two years, right, Frank? <laughs> on Vireo 4? I think it's more than that. So. Maybe, yeah, maybe three at this point. I lose track of time, I think. Yeah, it was pandemic. development, and then the last year has been migration development, so. Migrations, yep, exactly. Um, that's the biggest challenge here as well. And Emily, um, so many of you have seen lots of Emily today. She's been in a thousand sessions. Um, <laughs> and Emily is our co-chair for the Vireo User Group Steering Committee. Um, and Associate Director of Student Experience at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Um, and that session earlier was so good, Emily. Thank you so much for putting that panel together. It was wonderful. Um, so here on the slide, you see just a few things. That's a Vireo. Fred, I think you might be the only one in this group who does not maybe know that. <laughs> Did you already know that Vireo is a bird? Is a bird? I, knew that, I knew that there was a bird called a Vireo. <laughs> So that's what they based the name on. Texas A&M came up with the name um, and that's the Vireo bird. Um, I'm guessing everyone here probably has familiarity with what Vireo is because you're all users. So Emily, I think we might skip the next slide um, since this group is rather small. Um, and let's see here. I just wanna share with y'all stuff that will be new. Um, so this is just information about our um, TDL um, <clears throat> folks. Christy Park is the director of TDL. She couldn't be here today, unfortunately. But again, you've got me and Frank from TDL. Um, and then our co-chairs are currently Emily and Billy Peterson Lugo from Baylor University. The product owner for Vireo is at Texas Tech and his name is Christopher Starcher. And John Krosno is also on um, our Vireo user group. And he is from University um, of North, wait a minute. Yeah, UNT Health Science Center. So I don't think we need to introduce Vireo to y'all because um, you know Vireo pretty well. And I'm just gonna check one more time and make sure there's nobody new here who needs an intro. Oh, hi, John. John's joined us. Um, John also knows Vireo very well. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and skip that. Um, and just wanted to let y'all know, um, we wanna hear a little bit, um, well, I guess I already kind of know about how Fred and Stephanie and Emily interact with Vireo. Frank, did you have any questions you wanted to ask um, any of these folks? Um, you don't get an opportunity to talk to users that frequently. Uh, no, nothing in particular, just other than what they, uh, how long they've been using Vireo and, uh, you know, most of, I get a lot of good feedback from the users, so that's how I, uh, I help develop it. Yeah, what's the status there, Stephanie, at, um, Texas State? Oh, you can't, you can't unmute, that's right, but you can chat. And and Fred, we got caught up with you, but how close are y'all and what developers are you working with? We were so curious when you were talking earlier today. Oh, I guess um, maybe in the audio breakup, um, you couldn't hear. We were using Atmire. Oh, okay. Um, we're we're kind of um, in a in a in a organizational like change, like our digital repositories kind of merging with our archives department, and along with that is coming a um, we need to like really upgrade our D space. Yes. Um, and there was a lot of work with that. And so as that contract was being worked on, we 
various parties to say, hey, let's roll Virio into that as well. And so because we needed a Virio upgrade because we were on version three for, for a while now and liked the, the idea of the new functionality, the new organizational functionalities in Virio 4. And so Atmire is actually contracted to do that for us. So um, the developers at, at Virio, I, I suppose Frank and, and maybe others are, are hearing from Atmire folks, I'm sure, that are dealing with our upgrade. I, they haven't talked about it specifically, but they have been talking with me about migration. Okay, yeah. That's really interesting, Fred. Um, you might already be aware of this, but maybe not. Um, and Stephanie, I hope you don't mind me sharing, but Texas State is um, an Atmire customer. Um, mm -hmm. Atmire hosts their DSpace. Um, I don't think they host your Vireo, is that right? Y'all do that internally. No, it's self. Yeah. So my, you still can't hear me? Um, so it's interesting, the idea I of also... You can I, hear Stephanie? I heard Stephanie. No, I we heard can hear you. Now. We hear you now. Okay, yeah. good. I've been like clicking around on different things. I only have like four mm -hmm. different yeah. options. So sorry about that. Uh, no, Atmire does not host for us. We host uh, locally. Okay, somebody tell me when she's done speaking and I'll be quiet. I'm done. Oh, she said that Atmire um, does, they host locally is what is what she said. Mm -hmm. And at Georgia Tech, it's the same. We, we're going to host locally. They're just like doing the upgrade for both our DSpace and Virio. Oh, gotcha. That's okay. Interesting. So at Georgia Tech, what does your team like, your tech team? Stretched really thin which is why this came about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that makes sense. Um, I think we all know how that feels, right, Frank? <clears throat> I hope that the, your team there knows, um, Fred, that they can reach out and engage um, with TDL. It sounds like you've done some of that in the past, but we'd really like to um, keep in touch with y'all. Yeah, and I'll echo what Karen Manning said in the earlier presentation, we really appreciate the, the support from y'all. Yeah, y'all made our day. I, well, you made my day. I won't speak for Frank, but it made me really happy to hear that. It's been, it's been a slog for us and it's hard uh, to set yourself outside of that and hear positive feedback, um, but very good, so thank you. Um, I wanna make sure everyone here knows about our um, <clears throat> Shoot. Well, Frank, actually, I'm going to hand over to you because I'm actually having trouble hearing anybody now. Uh, everyone can hear me okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to mention that uh, there is the uh, annual Virio Users Group, uh, and that'll be October 5th. Uh, it's a chance for us all to get together and uh, learn a little more and uh, I get, you know, like I mentioned earlier, uh, feedback is really important to me to, to really understand how uh, things are being used, uh, what's working, uh, if data has been migrated properly, if there's things I've overlooked. I, I really need that feedback, so I, I hope to be there. And uh, a bit of learning materials, uh, some, some places to get started, but I think everyone here is pretty much uh, familiar, uh, though, you know, uh, I know uh, several people did some excellent videos uh, showing how to use Vario, and, and there's also uh, very good information on differences between Vario 3 and 4. Yeah, I think in particular that differences between Vario 3 and 4 um, will be useful to folks who are going into beer in the floor because we go through every element and tell you basically where the heck it moved in Vireo 3. So especially for those folks in graduate schools and libraries who've been using it for a while and they're used to one way, it's a nice tidy table that shows you where everything is moved. And it's so helpful. It's helpful to me as well, just because I'm not that familiar with Vireo 3. So. And me, yes. <laughs> 
exactly. I've never had to use it in an environment. So I really rely a lot on hearing feedback from users too. And um, I, this is, so this is exciting too. So this is me again, y'all. Can you hear me? I'm so worried about this because it's so weird that I couldn't hear Stephanie. You're okay, coming through can... very, very well. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to share some of the specially funded projects that TDL is launching um, for this year and over the next few years that are going to impact Vireo. Um, we, our governing board determines basically what we do and we're led by our members and we have set aside money for a lot of different exciting projects. Um, the first one is we are conducting an accessibility assessment and I wish I could have been in the West web of, web of accessibility session earlier, but I couldn't. Um, but our plan is to conduct an accessibility assessment and remediate code in all of the open, soft, open source software that we host, including Vireo. Um, and so we really have a strong commitment to compliance with accessibility guidelines, and we're going to make that happen over the next two years. So you'll see there um, on the slide, in our strategic plan, we've got it marked for now through 2023. And we've already started looking for really great accessibility auditors to look at our systems. And we're starting with Vireo because it's the one we host. Um, the other thing we're doing is undergoing an assessment and making recommendations for Vireo's long-term sustainability. Um, our plan is to get some outside expertise, again, probably a consultant, um, so that they can give us some advice about how to better sustain the open source system itself and the community and grow it um, and figure out a way so that the service is used on a greater scale so that we can know who's using it um, and also just you know pay for it in the future and make sure that it's always got active development. Um, because right now, you know, we have some schools in Texas who engage with development, but mostly it's Frank Smutniak, our lead developer and, and TDL and our excellent steering committee and product owner at Texas Tech who are running the show. So we'd really like to see more engagement and we need some help in figuring out the best way to make that happen. Anybody have any questions about that piece? Because these are new funded activities. Um, Take care. Can you hear me, Courtney? No. Maybe some, does anyone else hear me other than Courtney? Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, those of you who can speak. Um, then we're just going to have a discussion. So really any questions, um, my last slide was going to be on how to engage and Emily was going to talk to you about it, but I think you all know. I have a question. <laughs> so Courtney, can you some, question. Yeah. Courtney, can you hear Stephanie? I cannot hear Stephanie at all and I have no idea why. I that is weird. Stephanie, I can I can repeat your question to Courtney if you thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I know I forgot what it was. Sorry. Oh, you forgot uh, what it was. Consultation. Oh yes. Um, so Texas A and M is is not uh, participating in development anymore. If is Frank Texas A and M participating in development, Courtney? They haven't stopped participating in development, but right now we're not doing any further changes to the software itself. So the pause is just Frank getting the migration tools all ready to go. Um, Frank, do you want to add to that? Uh, I think that's, you, you said it all. Uh, the migration tool is independent of the product, obviously. And um, that's... There are some things that we, we do need to uh, update on Vireo 4, and we will be calling on, on Texas A&M to, to help us with that, but nothing's going on right now. That was Yeah, no new development for a while. I'm so glad I can hear you now. I can hear you now. You can? Yeah, I just heard you oh say that's God. my only question. <laughs> Hi. I don't know what's going on. I swear, technology. It's not good to be on an online world only. But yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just happy I can hear you. Yeah. So um, we've been we've been really, and I want to emphasize this for Fred and Karen too. We've been really mired in um, the development, and you know, for over the last couple of years. But once the development was done, and Frank's really dug into the migration. 
one of the biggest challenges there is is like, and you mentioned this at Georgia Tech too, is having Vireo, your, your Vireo 3 up, but then also having a Vireo 4 up somewhere and working through how you're gonna set that up while you're still trying to take in theses and dissertations through Vireo 3. And our members are experiencing that too. Mm -hmm. um, so we're really trying to get it going. We wanna be able to just move to supporting only Vireo 4 before the end of the year. And Frank has made some huge strides in the last couple of months. And, and some of that work is actually DevOps and being able to replicate a migration very quickly, uh, being able to set up a, a new site quickly, uh, setting up Shibboleth and setting up Shibboleth for all the independent uh, different uh, um, migra uh, migrated servers. So there's, there's a lot more to it than just strictly uh, one database schema to another database schema migration. So it's a, it's a collection of several tasks. Yeah, so we're just kind of open open now. If anybody has any questions or topics they want to talk about, we wanted to make sure we could give anyone who wanted to come today new information, um, and especially those two efforts that we're funding. There's a third effort, um, a diversity residency that we're hiring for at Texas Digital Library beginning next year, and we're hoping that that residency um, is a student who works on only digital library things and one of those would be Vireo. So we're hoping that they would be able to help us maybe with development, but probably more with user testing and creating training tools and that kind of thing. I have one question that uh, came to mind. You said that, um, so you're aiming for support for Vireo 4 to be all that you support uh, starting at, in 2022, is that correct? Yes, and I want to be clear that that means um, TDL's users that we support. Um, because we support so many open source systems, um, we need them all to be on the same version. And so we want to get everybody on Vireo 4 at once mm -hmm. so that we can just be supporting that. But in terms of GitHub activity and active developer conversations, you know, we're not going to turn somebody away who says, hey, I still have Vireo 3 and I have this question. <laughs> yeah. Which I, I worry that that's what it seemed like uh, I was okay. saying and that is not what I was saying. That, that's what I wanted to clarify. Because, you know, we may have to slow roll our transition to four. Uh, but I see Karen's on the call now, so she may be able to say. say more yeah, that. and I can't emphasize enough, we are also slow rolling our transition to four, so. <laughs> Do you have any, um, is anyone live from TDL with four or are testing instances up? And so they're not testing instances per se, mm -hmm. um, but Frank has instance parallel instances up basically that are not active, but that have all the current data. So that basically we're waiting to get confirmations from a few schools so that we can switch them over entirely while keeping their Vireo 3 instance running mm -hmm. in parallel in the background until they're comfortable saying, turn it off. <laughs> You know, we don't want to just force people, um, especially, you know, if they don't have a lot of folks, you know, this is a very small percentage of their job, as you know, so they don't have time to get in there and do as much testing as they might like. But yeah, we're, we're really trying. Um, Frank, who do you think is going to be first? Any guesses? Um, no, uh, one of the smaller data sets. Uh, some, some of it shown, some of the sites have shown uh, eagerness um, and there's maybe two or three sites that are eager to do it. I, I, I would be afraid I'd get the names wrong if I hazarded the <laughs> guess right now. So. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that probably next month. I'm that's my feeling. It feels to me like we're close to have at least one in production by next month. There are twelve of the thirteen sites that have uh, live up to date data. Uh, two of those 12, uh, there's some shibboleth issues that need to be resolved, and hopefully that'll happen pretty soon. So. 
And do you mean when they're up to date, when they're getting recent submissions, um, I guess you're migrating them from three to four? Or? Well, it, it's a recent snapshot of Vario 3. So like within the last okay. uh, couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So it's a representation of what is in Vario 3, but no mm -hmm. one is yet actively creating new submissions in Vario 4 yet. Okay. Timing has been tricky too, and I imagine um, Georgia Tech will have that experience or has maybe had that experience too with just the timing of when submissions need to come in and be processed, and then Frank working kind of between those, <laughs> those times, and not all institutions are the same in terms of when they're bringing in content through Vireo. So yeah, it's been, it's been um, an adventure. So I think at the Vireo user group meeting that we're going to do um, on October 5th, we're going to go a little bit more in depth about development. Frank will have a little bit more to say. So um, if you've got any development folks or if the Atmire folks want to join that, um, I think that would probably be a good thing to do. We will definitely let them know about it. Yeah, thank you so much. I don't know if they're on our list or not. I know that they're in our, in, they engage with us in Slack and over email sometimes. Well, I don't wanna keep people unnecessarily but I'm just, I'm really liking to see, I haven't seen Stephanie for so, so long. Stephanie used to, well, Stephanie served forever on the steering committee and was the product owner of Vireo. Stephanie is responsible for a lot of Vireo for bells and whistles that are really cool. <laughs> I'm not responsible for the complicated parts of Vireo. <laughs> <laughs> so, I tell you hey. that. What, no. what you do, it it was complicated. It was just not that technical, was, perhaps. Okay. I don't know. And you'll also hear Stephanie's voice if you if you watch some of our videos that are on YouTube as well. That's true. I can't not shout you out, Stephanie. You've done so much for this system. No, oh, thanks. Well, All I right. want to wrap us up then. If anybody mm -hmm. has any burning questions left, let me know now. Emily, you want to add anything? She's like in getting a break. Yeah, I can't think of anything to add. But thank you all for coming. And it's good to see you, Stephanie. So good. Yeah. And Me Karen too. and Fred, I'm really glad to have mm -hmm. met you today. And I hope we can stay in touch. Yes. And thank you so much for participating in that panel. It was fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was a really great panel. Thanks, y'all. Oh, and there it goes. All right. Bye. Bye, everybody. We can't understand you, Fred, again. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Email. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you, Emily. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye.